Hello Year 11, I hope you are enjoying your summer holidays now that you've done all of your assessments in school. So I'm filming this video at the start of July and in this I'm going to go through three kind of bits of advice, kind of three top tips that I think you should consider, especially if you're going to be doing A-level physics. Now the first thing is to go to my website. You can go to either the GCSE or A-Level Physics online website and at the top you'll see it says Intro to A-Level. If you click on that it then comes up with some information about what A-Level Physics actually is. So I've made a series of video guides. Uh, the first one I just talk about, you know, what an A-Level in Physics actually is, a bit about the grading structure, the kind of things you're going to be covering. But on my website in addition to this you'll see that I've got various topics all highlighted in beautiful bright colours. Um, if we maybe start with Maths for Physics, on this page I then have some of the things that you're going to be familiar with from GCSE. So you know Pythagoras, trigonometry, stuff you might have done in your GCSE Maths class. And then I talk about maybe some of the things that might be introduced at A level. I've then got a video where I explain all of that and I just revise some of the kind of key GCSE concepts. And if that's not enough for you, I also link back to my GCSE Physics website where I have videos that basically teach you from scratch all of this information. And you'll notice here that I have the same kind of thing for all of the main things that you're going to be starting in Year 12. This is actually really useful if you're going into Year 13 as well because I also talk about some of the later things. So if you were to maybe look at things like circular motion, um, when you click on that, again this goes I suppose it links back to what you might have done at GCSE and then how this is then linked to some of the new A-level topics um, and so on. So I've got introductions to all of the subjects that you might be covering as you go through the full A-level and it's worth watching these videos. Again, you can do that, it's free, it's easy to do, it takes a bit of time but it just starts to get you used to the language and if you've watched all of these videos and also this links back to the stuff that you might not have covered at GCSE due to disruption in your lessons. That's going to really help you, give you a bit more confidence when you're sat in maybe a new classroom with a different teacher looking at some of the A-level physics. So that's my first thing. Have a look at my introduction to A-level physics videos. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is a book. This one here is perfect if you're preparing for A-level physics because it's called Prepare for the Challenge of A-level Physics, uh, published by Kit Betts Masters, who's got another YouTube channel, uh, which I've linked to up here, called Guerrilla Physics. Now this book here is ideal because it basically goes through, again, what A-level physics is. He's gone through some of the topics and then there's also some practicals that you could have a go at at home, as well as some kind of independent study tasks. Now, I reckon you could probably, we could easily read this whole book in one day, and there's still many, many days until your courses start in September. So I think if you were to get this, then actually by reading through this, it would give you that overview of what A-level physics is like. There's some questions, there's things that you can have a go at. So I can't see any reason why you wouldn't get this. This is the hard copy that I ordered through Amazon. You can get a Kindle version as well if you want the ebook. Um, I think it costs about six pounds, but what I'll do is I'll put the link beneath the video. So my second tip is to get this book called Prepare for the Challenge of A-Level Physics. It'll be sent to you in the post if you're in the UK. Um, and that means then that you've got a bit of an idea about what's coming up. Okay, the third thing. Okay, it's good watching videos, it's good reading books, but at some point you need to be proactive in the learning that you're doing. And the third thing I think you could really consider is doing some questions on Isaac Physics. Now, some of you are going to be familiar with this from GCSE, and actually on my GCSE website, um, what I have, if you scroll down to the bottom, in the footer you'll see Isaac Physics game boards, and these are what I've put together for GCSE Physics. You can also see them if you were to maybe uh, select your exam board on the GCSE website. Hopefully you were familiar with this when you were doing your GCSE assessments. Um, and you'll see in purple it says Isaac Physics. If you click on that, what I did was I went through their GCSE book and I selected the appropriate questions for GCSE which all students would be able to access. Let me just click that again. Now, I reckon if you've got the time, which you do have, then you can basically do this completely online and it will give you a load of questions for you to have a go at and it will let you know when you're correct. 
So it doesn't really matter which one you do. I reckon you should try and do them all, which is easily achievable if you're wanting and if you're motivated to do A-level physics. Let's say we did current and charge. Um, when it goes to the videos on the GCSE website in the top right hand corner, it says Isaac Physics. If you click on that, it takes you to the Isaac Physics website. Um, again, this is completely free for you to sign up to. Now, there are questions there that you can have a go at. And I reckon it's a good thing just to revise this content, even though you might have done it recently for any GCSE assessments. This is something that you personally can work through because it also records the amount of questions that you've done that you've got correct. Now, the other thing that I think you should be looking at is if you go to the um, home page on Isaac Physics, if you then go to A level or equivalent, what you can then do is select extra questions which aren't in the book. And if you go to the question finder, I think that before you start A level physics, you could have a go at all of the level one questions. So we click on level one, we click on physics, and then it gives you basically a selection of 10 questions that you can then work through. Now, I personally have worked through every single level one question, and I know that 99% of them are absolutely suitable for somebody who hasn't actually studied A-level physics. These are basically the top end of GCSE. Now, um, you can do the questions, you can then shuffle the questions and it brings up another 10 and another 10 and so on. There's only about 100 in total. But if you start doing these questions, it gets you used to using Isaac Physics, which I think is an incredibly valuable tool. It's a bit difficult to use at times, but I think that all of this stuff here, you should be able to do. And that means as you go into year 12 and in through year 13 as well, um, you then kind of start to increase the difficulty of the questions. Level two and level three are the kind of questions that you're going to be doing in year 12. And then level four and level five are the kind of questions you're going to be doing in year 13. But if you can do all of the level one questions before you start A-level physics, then I guarantee you're going to be a lot more confident. And when you do questions in class, when you do questions for homework, they're going to seem a lot more straightforward. So my three top tips, basically in summary, are look at the introduction to A-level videos that I've made, buy the book called Prepare for the Challenge of A-level Physics and read through that. And the third thing is to get up to eyes at physics, sign up, you'll see that there's so much out there, but basically limit yourself to doing questions from the GCSE book and the level one questions on the game boards. And that will then give you so much practice that by the time you start year 12, it's going to seem straightforward. Because ultimately, everybody starting year 12 is like a massive steep learning curve, especially with continual disruption to schools. And I suspect there's still going to be isolation, some remote learning uh, and uncertainty about exams in the future. But ultimately, you're the one who's got to do the work. And if you want to do A-level physics, it is probably the best a level, in my opinion, I'm very, very, very biased about that. But it's something that um, it's really down to you to put the work in. And if you can give yourself that kind of that kind of small advantage at the start, the rest of it's going to flow really nicely. Don't forget, of course, if you want to stay updated with the stuff that I do on YouTube, including lots more videos for A-Level, and I've got big plans for the coming years, then you can follow me. Uh, if you turn on notifications, you'll get uh, reminded about any live streams that I do. And again, don't forget to look at my website, A-Level Physics Online. You don't need to subscribe on that yet. It's all completely free for everything in Year 12. So if you're thinking about subscribing, just wait until you get into the end of Year 12 or the Year 13. Um, and then you can access hundreds more videos to support you throughout the entire course. So, yeah, have a good summer. Don't work too hard. But if you can do some small work every, every you know, maybe every week you do a small amount of work, that's going to really help you as you start back at school in September. Thank you.